It will make it look like I have the most flawless skin in the world. You see me up close and you're like, dude, that is a crusty butthole if I ever did see one. Bite. Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a first impression try on, wear test, and review on the new Bite Beauty Changemaker Foundation. I haven't done a review in so long. I literally don't remember how to do them. I'm sitting here like, what do I say? What do I, what do, I do? <laughs> What do I try? Relax a little bit and just try the foundation. So if you guys haven't heard of this foundation, it is Bite Beauty's first ever foundation. And it is a supercharged micellar foundation. Now I've seen so much go around about this. People really excited for it. It has some claims. I'm gonna discuss those in a second. I've seen a lot of people loving it. A few of those people have been sponsored by Bite. Those are also some people that I trust. So it's hard to say if I'm gonna like it or not. It is, I believe, like a medium-ish coverage foundation. Sometimes I like those, sometimes I don't just really Depends. So I'm gonna try it with the primer that they sent as well on half my face and try it with a brush beauty blender, do a wear test, see how it performs on my skin. I have typically dry skin, I've got texture. I do get some oiliness on my nose throughout the day. It's not something that I really know my skin type all that well. I usually say dry because I'm a flaky lady, but am I dry or am I just a flaky lady? Raw Flaky Christy, at your service. This foundation comes in 32 shades. It has a decent range of fair, light, medium, and deep. I will say from looking, it looks like there are more I would call fair, light, medium, and kind of deep shades. It could be a more balanced range in my opinion. Uh, it's not terrible. It is their first foundation launch. It's better than a lot of companies do, but still probably not as good as it can be. They do have a shade finder on Sephora. They call this a clean at Sephora product. Now there's a lot of uh, heat going around about that terminology and saying that it's a marketing tactic, like calling things natural when natural could literally mean so many different things. People are saying like, what makes this specific product more clean than other products? There is a list of things that need to be done to, in order to be labeled clean. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not gonna even pretend that I know all about that, but there are some videos that I've seen going around where people are like, mm, that's kind of like a marketing ploy and it's kind of just to get people to feel like it's better for you than it really is. Now Bite typically has always used incredible ingredients in their products. That's sort of their tagline is that their products are sort of like food grade. They usually were doing a lot of lip products. They are the ones that you've seen with like the Agave lip mask and the lip products. And I've, I like Bite lip, lip products. They're really nice. I actually did, went to the Bite lip lab when I was in San Francisco. <laughs> was I in San Francisco? Where was I? I can't remember. And it was so much fun. They custom make you um, whatever lip colors that you pay for. Obviously they have different services that they do, but you can get different colored lipsticks. And so I made like a really beautiful nude and like a dupe for Mochalicious. I haven't used them on camera. I don't know why I haven't used them on camera. You can choose any color that you want, custom mix a color, and then they make it into a lipstick for you right there. They engrave the tube with like whatever you want and like your name or a name of the lipstick or whatever. And it's just really fun. Like I really enjoyed going. Despite all of that, Bite is a really well liked brand in that regard that they are sort of considered more good for you makeup. And you know, I'm not the one to tell you. <laughs> But maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Oh, by the way, if you guys are interested in checking out this makeup thing, if you haven't seen these eyes and how I got them, I will link it up here. It was with the Mint to Be palette from Color Mom. Okay, it says here, introducing the Change Maker Skin Optimizing Primer. So for the primer, it says dry, oily, get skin to neutral before adding foundation. $38 USD and it's the clean primer. Now they did send both. I am gonna be using the dry one today. I typically don't believe in primer. I think primer is a gimmick. Who knows, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just being a skeptic. All I know is that I think primers generally kind of a gimmick because for me, I've used primers through and through and through. I've tried pore filling primers. I've tried, sometimes moisturizing primers can work, but at the end of the day, they're like a moisturizer. So to me, it's like, do I need a, a moisturizer and a primer or just a moisturizing primer? I've said that word so many times, it doesn't make sense anymore. But my point is I have never in my life used a primer that I know of where I've seen such a significant difference that it was worth adding into my routine, that additional step that I feel like I don't need. I've never noticed that my makeup wears longer, that it makes my makeup look better, nothing. I've done half face tests, I've done full face tests, I've done wear tests with it on one side. I just don't know that I've ever seen a difference with primer. Some people swear by it and I believe in it when it comes to like paint and stuff. We had like painters come in and paint the house. They didn't use primer on a few of the doors and the paint is already peeling and the ones they did prime are still in great condition. So I believe in it when it comes to things like paint, 
house stuff. But to skin, I just don't know if it's a necessary step. For me, moisturizer almost just does the exact same thing. So either way, we're gonna try the primer today. And then it says here for the Change Maker Supercharge Micellar Foundation. Micellar formula mimics skin texture for a natural finish. Buildable medium coverage in 32 shades, 39.50 USD, 52 Canadian. Change Maker Flexible Coverage Pressed Powder with volcanic minerals, not talc. Blurs, controls shine, and mattifies, $36 USD. They also came out with lip products and then they reformulated their agave lip mask to be vegan. I think that they're moving, or if not already completely moved to a completely vegan line before it had lanolin in it. And if you don't know, lanolin is a byproduct of sheep's wool. So they couldn't consider it vegan, but I guess now it is. So I'm gonna be trying these out for you today. They sent over three shades. I think I'm gonna go with the shade L20. This looks a little light for me. I like to either match my skin pretty directly or go a little bit darker because I do have dry skin skin and sometimes the lighter foundations can emphasize my texture and we do not want that. It is a natural finish, a liquid foundation, medium coverage. It says it works for all skin types. Clean at Sephora is formulated without a list of over 50 ingredients including sulfates, SLS and SLES, parabens, phthalates and more. But it does have fragrance in it which is a lot of people saying how is that good for your skin? There has been proven studies saying that fragrance is not beneficial in any way towards your skin and actually can be harmful as well and this does include fragrance. They say that it's less than 1% of here, but it's like why add it in in general. I'm gonna smell it and let you guys know what it smells like. As we know, I do. 529 reviews already. Nothing worked and it looked patchy. I'm oily, so I'm not sure why it looked patchy. So let's just give it a go and see if it looks patchy on me. Raw patchy Christy. All right, so I'm gonna be using the Bite Change Maker Skin Optimizing Primer for normal to dry skin on one side of my face. This is what the bottle looks like. I'm gonna use about that much. So this is what the product looks like. Looks just kind of like a moisturizer. I don't notice any fragrance in this. I am going to use the primer on the left side of my face. So let's see. You know, I don't have a hair tie in here, but I'm just gonna go like this. You guys hate it when I don't pin my hair back. I mean like rightfully so, I understand. So I'm just gonna like do a little makeup brush stuck up in the bang situation. You guys cool with that? So here's my skin before everything. So let's apply the primer on this side. I already did a moisturizer this morning. I used the Tatcha water cream. This does feel just kind of like a nice hydrating moisture. It doesn't feel silicone-y in any way. It just feels like a nice moisturizer. Very, I don't notice any scent in this at all. It smells completely neutral, like as neutral as water, you know? So this is adding like a nice tackiness to my skin. It does feel nice and hydrating. It sunk in well. All right, let's stick these bangs back too. Just makeup brushes in my hair. You know, I just don't care. So it comes just in a squeeze tube. There's no pump or anything on it. And let's see here. That color might work for me. This is again, the shade L20. I don't notice a fragrance. Why add fragrance if you can't smell it? So I am going to just put a couple of little dots on my skin. I'm not gonna try to overdo it with this foundation to get it to full coverage because this is a medium coverage foundation. I'm not gonna cake it on to where I'm like, oh, my skin looks cakey, you know? Sometimes I have the tendency to do that because I'm a YouTuber and I feel like we get stuck in the mindset that we need to have full coverage skin at all times. That's how much I got. I'm gonna use a brush on this side. does have like a natural finish, I would say. I'm gonna try my fingers up here on my forehead, not a brush, to see how it blends in with my fingers. I've seen some people applying it that way. Maybe I do notice a tiny bit of scent. It's not like overwhelming at all. It's nothing like Huda. All right, let's see how it looks on my nose. My nose is rough at times. All right, let me look up close. Um, okay, I'm gonna apply the other side first and then I'll give my thoughts. I feel like it's showing the streaks of the brush. So let's see if a beauty blender is a little bit better. And I'm only using about that much. Like I'm really not overdoing it with product. Beauty blender. Okay, that definitely shears out the coverage quite a lot. Like, quite a lot. 
I kind of like the finish of it more in the way that it, it looks a little like heavy on this side. Like I feel like I almost want to take my sponge and tap it over it. The coverage on this side is pretty pretty nil at that point. I would call it light coverage with a sponge. It definitely takes the coverage down quite a bit. All right, let's see what it looks like. You can still see my blemishes through it. You can see on my nose, it doesn't look that great. It's kind of clinging to the dry patches. I feel like I would need to spot conceal around my nose quite a bit. This side has hardly any coverage on it at all. And I did put foundation on my nose for sure. I'd say I get a better application with the brush in the terms of coverage to getting it to, I would say medium coverage, but for finish, I like it a little better with the beauty blender. So that's a tough one. I'm gonna use a little bit more foundation that kind of got absorbed by the beauty blender so I'm just gonna pat a little bit more on so that both sides are even I'm gonna use the brush for this I don't think the color is bad on me. So first impression on the foundation after application. For a medium coverage foundation, I don't think it looks terrible, but I don't think it looks remarkable. And I don't know that I would reach for this off a of first impression right now more than I would my other foundations. Now maybe when I put my concealer and everything on, it'll bring it all together and that's probably the case. Uh, you can still see imperfections through it. You can still see like a pimple right down here through it. You can still see my freckles and sunspots and stuff like that through it. My nose looks horrendous. My nose is like the area where you can really, really tell if it's going to be good or bad. I'm going to turn the lights down and zoom you in so you can see what I mean when I say horrendous. You see that? How it does not want to stick to my nose and it just looks incredibly textured. I did exfoliate my face too before sitting down to film. So I don't know. So I'm gonna put some concealer on and I'm gonna be using the ColourPop No Filter. I'm gonna go very light on the concealer. A couple of dots. I'm gonna kind of shear this out a bit. I'm gonna go in with my beauty blender and really pat it in under the eyes. Would I leave the house like this? Yes. To run errands, to have a light looking day, to have coverage where I'm not wanting that full coverage glam, but I want my skin to just look a lot more even and awake. It doesn't look bad. My nose looks terrible. I would probably just be very cautious with my nose and try to make it work. I am going to try to get my nose in a decent place. Let's see if I can. So that looks way better. When I used the brush and kind of went over it, it just sort of removed the product. Patting it on with a beauty blender like that seemed to uh, go well. It does look nice like on camera. Camera is a liar. It's, a, it's an idiot. It's stupid. It doesn't know anything. It deceives you all, all of you watching deceptive. It will make it look like I have the most flawless skin in the world. You see me up close and you're like, dude, that is a crusty butthole if I ever did see one. Right now, it's sort of, um, I'd say relatively accurate to how I look. Nobody's gonna be that close to me. My husband doesn't care and I don't care either. I would go for this more, like I said, on days where I wanna look really light and natural, which on days like that, I just wear no makeup. <laughs> so I actually really love the way it looks on the monitor. I think it looks nice. I do want to use a little bit of this Bite Beauty Change Maker. This is a flexible coverage pressed powder. And now it did come with a puff in there as well. I'm going to try a little bit of this on my under eyes just to see how this sort of performs. I haven't used a pressed powder like this in so long. Okay. Yeah, that darkened it a lot. Do you see that? That's the shade light two. Okay, this is the shade light one. So maybe this is the one. Oh my God, that looks so bad. It's like orange on my under eye. Bite. Oh, it wasn't looking so bad and then Bite had to fuck me. It is very mattifying. It really is. See what the light number one looks like on the other side without darkening. That's the color. That's the one. I'm really only gonna set underneath my eyes like that. Man, this eye looks so weird. That's very smoothing. I feel like it definitely mattified. It's definitely smoothing like a big, big, big time. Mm, no, it doesn't look bad at all actually. I have no complaints about the powder other than that color issue. Right now it is 12.49 when I am filming this. I started putting this on, I would say about 12.30. All right, I just finished the rest of my makeup. This is it. It is now 1.02 and I like the way that it looks quite a lot now that the rest of my makeup was on. So I'm gonna show you guys closer up and everything like that. But as of now, with the rest of my makeup on, I really like the way that it looks 
for what it is. It actually looks really beautiful and it looks like me. It doesn't look like me with a mask on and I do like that. I can't believe how much I'm actually liking it and you know what I think I'm liking the most? The freaking powder. If I had used the correct powder, man, it really is super, super like soft and smooth but I really like the way it looks. It does look just like I have nice skin. It doesn't look cakey. It does look just nice and regular. I'd say it does have a natural finish. It's a little bit mattifying in a way. It's not like super dewy. It's not super matte. It just really does kind of fall right in that mid range. Keep in mind, this is just for my skin. Everybody's skin performs differently. But if you are wanting to try this foundation out and you're like, man, that's kind of expensive, you can always go get a sample from Sephora. Maybe that'll help you. I will zoom you guys in and then we will be back in a few hours. Okay, it's officially 9.01 p.m., but I will show you guys kind of what we look like. We're on a front camera here. What are we, eight hours wear right now? It actually looks really good. For a medium coverage, kind of quick every day, don't want that full coverage foundation, I actually really like it. I'm going to continue wearing this for sure. Before I upload this video, I'll try to do more wear tests, hopefully if I can, but I am very impressed with it so far because it is very long wearing on me at this point. Yes, it's a little bit shiny, but nothing like my other foundations would be. It feels comfortable too. Most of the time at an eight hour mark, I would be like, wanting it off my face and it just would feel thick and cakey but because i didn't need to use a ton of this it doesn't feel that way at all other than that i just feel like the coverage is kind of the perfect level this is a little bit movable when you first put it on but honestly i've been rubbing my mouth like i eat dinner and i wipe my mouth and i totally forgot that i shouldn't do that and i've been like itching my face and stuff all day and no issues so i'm honestly very impressed with this foundation so far i feel like it's nice but if it is better ingredients than other foundations or if it's all around kind of better for you, I mean, I don't know. So, I feel like it hasn't changed much. It kind of looks exactly the same as when I first put it on. Okay, so day two of wearing the Bite Change Maker Foundation. I did my skin very differently today. This is the weirdest foundation I swear I've ever used. So, my skin looks really good right now, right? 15 minutes ago when I put this foundation on, heaven help me if it wasn't the grossest my skin has ever looked. This foundation is so weird. So you put it on and it's like, oh my God, I have never been uglier. The crepiest skin, dry, crusty, hideous. Five minutes later, you look like an angel. It's so weird. That's why when you first saw me putting it on, I'm like, my nose looks hideous. My nose a few minutes ago has never looked worse and right now it looks totally normal. I do not understand. So basically, um, I'll tell you the way I applied it today. So I put primer on this side of my face, the same primer that I used before. My whole face was moisturized with the Tatcha water cream this morning, like an hour and a half ago. So that had a chance to sink in. And then I used the primer on this side and then I put the whole foundation over my face. I put it on with my fingers first and then I used a brush on my nose, I used a beauty blender to tap it in. And then I set my entire face today with the Bite Change Maker Light Flexible Coverage Press Powder. I did that because I put it on just my under eyes like before, and it was kind of the same. I used the color that was correct for me this time, but it like darkened my foundation a little bit, and then it looked like so different. So I put it over my entire face, and it like transformed my foundation. I can't even explain it to you other than to say, that it made my skin look amazing. <laughs> that powder is where it's at. But before that, I don't know if I would have liked it, but honestly, setting it with the powder, like I feel that I look absolutely flawless right now. I wish I could give you like my rounded thoughts on this so far. It gets better throughout the day. So change maker, it's making changes on me. It's changing my mind every two and a half seconds. Right now it's 10, 13 a.m. So I started putting this on at 10. So we'll do the check-in time at 10. I'll see you in a bit. I thought I would show you guys a natural light while we're looking at the mountain in my car. Just looks amazing. I'm like, what the hell? Okay guys, it is 3 p.m. So it's been on for five hours right now. <laughs> Y'all, this foundation gets better and better throughout the day. You know what I've noticed about it too is it's very, very little transfer. It looks so natural on the skin. I mean, when I tell you it looked horrific when I first put it on, I can't even begin to explain. And right now it could be my bare skin. That's how good it looks. So at the five hour mark as of right now, love it, love it. 
c'est magnifique. About 12 hours now, it's about 10.30 p.m. And uh, highly impressed. I feel like everything looks great. I mean, the wear, this, this is my natural oil shining through. I mean, I've had a whole full day and I feel like it just looks so good. I mean, I can't even say a, a negative thing. Do I notice a difference in the primed side versus the not primed side? I primed this side of my face. Nope. <laughs> Primers aren't real. No, that's not true. Maybe, I don't know. Today is day three of wearing the foundation. It is like noon right now because I had a horrific cluster attack this morning. It was really fun, so. So I had a heating pad on my face all morning, so I'm extra red on this side, so it's not gonna cover nearly as well. It just looks really noticeable on the skin when you first put it on. That's what I mean by like, it looks horrible. It just like slides around. You can see all the lines, you can see all the redness and then it just turns into magic. So let's see if it'll turn into magic today with all this redness that I have. Five minutes, I'm gonna elapse five to 10 minutes and I will be right back and voila. And here we are 10 minutes later with the rest of the face done. Do you see what I'm talking about? Like when the rest of the makeup is on, it's just like it melts into the skin and just starts looking amazing. And then like three, four hours from now, it's gonna look even better. It is 12, 12. We're gonna call the check-in time noon. I do wanna let you know, I did not use any other moisturizer on my face. Today, I only used the Change Maker Primer. I will see you guys later today. All right, it's 5.51 PM. It's been on for about five, almost six hours, but um, so far, so good. I had this thing on my head all day, like over my forehead. We we're out working, still looking pretty good. So overall, day three, Kind of the same as days one and two. It is 9.08 p.m. Final verdict. I freaking love this foundation. I can't even believe it. I really didn't think I was going to because it's medium coverage. It looks so gross when you put it on. It's just, there's something about it. And I think the powder really is what does it. So I'm gonna say I love the foundation plus the powder. I just, I can't believe it. Bite, how did you do this? I don't know how you did it, but I'm appreciative of it. All right, well, I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this review slash wear test slash first impression was helpful for you. I don't know the outcome yet because we're back in time, Christy, but let me know. I don't need to, you don't need to let me know because I will let myself know in 10 hours. Well, I thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. And I will see you at my next video. Bye. A few of those people are her peeper. The shades they sent are lighter than I would typically, I just spit, on one side of my face. If these cars could literally fuck off into another dimension, get off my street, get out of here, just take another street. I'm not gonna try to overdo it with this foundation. Foundation. Better application with the brush. I just threw my beauty blender. Cool. But plat, this is the outro, Zach. Zach, this is the outro for the foundation video. It is a little bit of an expensive foundation. That's why I say to pick up a, sp a spample. It is a bit of a foundation. Are interested, I would definitely pick up a sample. I already said that. <laughs>